guys, it's Ariana. Welcome back to my channel. So sorry if I'm squinting, I'm wearing my contacts and this eye is like burning for some reason tonight. So if I'm giving the camera weird looks, it's because this eye is being really, really annoying. So welcome back to my channel. I am going to be reading some more scary stories tonight. So I have my Ray Dunn candle in here as per usual. It smells like caramel apple, it smells amazing. It's not lit because I don't need it to be lit. I'm not wearing a wig today because we are still in a heat wave. And I recently just dyed my hair this silver color. So I wanted to wear my hair silver in a couple videos anyway, until it fades like it probably will. And <laughs> my hair is very damaged right now, so please ignore that. So I'm going to be reading a few more scary stories that I have gotten permission and actually have gotten one of them sent in to me to read. So let's just jump on into it. The Wretched Wanderer on Reddit. So their story starts off with forever in nowhere. I still remember that moment, that very second. It was the last time I could feel anything. I felt pain. My head hit the hard concrete suddenly. The next thing I remember, I was still. I couldn't move. I don't know if I was cold or warm, just stillness. I feel like a mind with no body, a specter glued in place, purgatory. I could still yet hear for some reason, some damn reason. I would rather live in darkness. Most days, my ears are filled with the constant beeping of contraptions that prolong the empty days. Those are hardly the worst days. After I fell into my eternal sleep, I remember hearing foggy voices inside my room, doctors and nurses explaining my condition freak accident and tragedy fill their sad lungs constantly. I remember my parents coming in. I couldn't see tears, but just from the sound, I could tell they were there. Asking questions I wish they never did. When will he wake up? Will we ever have our boy back? Is there anything you people can do? All to sorrowful silence and empty promises. Over time, they grew less hopeful and angry, but the sadness still remained. He had so much opportunity I wish he could have seen such and such. Shame his niece never got to know him. My world around me continues as if I was just a vague specter, reading a news article. I miss them. Their words aren't enough. Most of all, I miss her. The one who never forgets to come back. The one who always cried the hardest. The one who, even after forever, still tells me she loves me. She doesn't even know I hear her. If I could just let out a whimper, a quiet word that barely a mouse could hear, I would tell her I still love her. But in the endless conscious repose, I have forgotten her face. My eyes may be dry, but my soul has wept for decades. They all moved on, and I'm still wanting to. One voice that comes in still is one that I don't know the face of. One that speaks, but not in heartful memories. The only other one who speaks to me, the man that slammed his foot against my head. He comes in and just watches me silently most times, nor why he's taken such interest in the same things I did. He chuckles to himself in the corner, telling me the news. I don't know why he still comes in, just to tell me what he did, what he's still doing to me, the life he's living in my place. The one that told me last night that he has a final meal for me after he married my wife. I don't know his face, but I have a feeling it looks a lot like mine. And that's how the story ends. Oh my God. Kind of creepy that he uh, is just like a conscious being and nobody can actually hear him or see him, but that's really sad. It sounds like this is the story is taking place like somebody is in like a coma. It sounds really, really terrifying and super scary for the person that's in the coma and just really, really sad. It's just a really, really sad story. This one is from Anonymous3002, my grandma's house and the ghostly music box. My grandma always used to say that she felt like her house was haunted, but she never felt threatened by anything there. I never felt threatened either, but I felt uneasy in the basement. In fact, I still have a weird feeling in the pit of my stomach if I'm ever down there. Whenever I would stay the night at her house, I always heard footsteps outside of the bedroom door or behind me when I was in the basement by myself. I assumed it was my grandma, but sometimes I would go upstairs from the basement to check and find her reading her book in the living room. She definitely wouldn't have had enough time to walk from the basement to the living room in such a short time. The footsteps outside of the bathroom door was another thing I presumed was my grandma as well. However, there was one time I did go investigate because the footsteps were just going up and down the hallway instead of straight from the bathroom to her bedroom. I thought maybe something was wrong. So I put my head up to the door to hear the footsteps and then opened the door quickly. Nothing was in the hallway and my grandma was sound asleep in her bed. There was another time when my sister and I were at my grandma's house alone, playing paper dolls on the rug in the hallway. We both felt something strange and looked over at the end of the hall where the bedrooms and bathrooms are, to notice a man walking from the bathroom to my grandma's bedroom. My sister and I jumped up and ran out of the house into the backyard. This was before cell phones, so we couldn't use the landline to call my mom since she didn't have a cell phone. My grandma's brother used to live with her, 
because he was too unwell to care for himself. I'm not sure exactly what happened to him because he was fine growing up, but something happened to him that caused him to stop talking. It could have been the war or another traumatic incident, but I was too young to ask those types of questions. I simply knew him that way my whole life. He used to love giving me and my sister little gifts, but I vividly remember his big smile whenever he played his music box for us. When he passed away, my grandma left his room pretty much the same. She got rid of the clothes, but kept the same furniture and some of his knickknacks. One evening, when I was staying with my grandma, we were baking cookies in her kitchen. We both heard music coming from his room. I looked at her perplexed and asked, what is that? She shrugged and had us both go towards the sound of the music, only to find that it was coming from the music box in his old room. I picked it up and it stopped playing. My grandma let me keep the music box because she believed her brother wanted me to have it. I took it home and placed it on my bedside table. It only ever played by itself two more times after that, generally whenever I was feeling down. I still have it to this day, but sadly, it's in storage right now. After writing this and reliving these memories, I think I should put it back on the shelf. And that's how they ended that story. So that's a really sweet story. If it is her uncle, then he's just letting you know that he's there and saying hello. <laughs> and the last story that I want to read is actually from somebody in my comment section. They left me a story to read, so I want to read it for you guys. Hey, how are you? I just found this channel the other day and I dig it. As promised, I will share a story with you. My parents' house is haunted to me and my sister, and it always has been. There is a previous owner of the house, an old lady, and one very bad entity. So it's hard to narrow down one single story. I have so many from routine type happenings to crazy shit being like doors that would open and shut with all the windows closed so it could not be the wind. We had these Texas style doors that would swing open either way from the kitchen to the dining room, and those doors became such an annoyance that my mom made my dad remove them. I remember being young and hearing the sound of people talking and also the sounds of cards shuffling. Being curious, I'd leave my room to investigate. My mom would find me sitting at the top of the step where I thought the noises were coming from. One night, there was a crazy thunderstorm with high winds as I was trying to fall asleep and I just couldn't because there was this tall, thin tree that would arc over and scratch the window and siding of the house. Good luck sleeping through that, I thought to myself. I'm never going to sleep tonight. Eventually, I fell asleep, not sure of how long I was out for, but I thought I was having a nightmare where my bed was violently shaking, and when I opened my eyes and sat up, the mattress and box had moved. I remember being in panic mode. I jumped off the bed and ran into the hallway. My mom had heard the activity and was en route to me. She threw the light on, asking me what the hell was going on, and stopped in her tracks. She gave me this odd look and walked over to me, staring at my chest. Oh my God, she said as she pushed me into the bathroom, her hands on my shoulders, turning me toward the mirror. On my chest were markings, like hieroglyphics. My sister had heard the noise and came to see what was going on. She too was horrified by this. We didn't know it at the time, what the future held for us, because this was just beginning. I hope I didn't bore you, but this is 100% facts. And that's how they ended the story. If you have any more stories that you want to share with me, I will definitely read them because your house sounds terrifying. And did they scar? Do you have like scarring of hieroglyphics on your chest? Because that is terrifying. I'm so sorry if it's so loud in here. My house is being really, really loud right now and the cars keep going by. So if there's a lot of cuts in this video, it's because everybody in this house is being super loud. <laughs> so that's where I'm going to end it tonight because my studio is really warm and my house is just a little bit too loud to read these spooky stories with you guys tonight. And the cars just will not stop. There's another one going by right now. I don't know what's going on. It's literally almost 10 o'clock at night and the cars will not stop. It's, I feel like I'm on a highway right now. I'm gonna end the video here and <laughs> I will read some more scary stories with you guys another time when it's not so fucking loud. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below for more content like this and I will see you guys at the next video. Bye.